Spanish as they can at the Dorian Cadence. And that's what we're learning. Different cadence. Gladios, I'm Tim. And I'm Don. And together, together we, we are my aim, the improvised line. line. And an innovative method. Welcome to our channel, guys. We're all about playing music, improvisation, and the cycle of movable keys. So today we're looking at our seventh lesson on a four chord chord progression. What are we going to look at today, Doc? I thought today, Tim, we'd take a look at a one, four, five, two progression. So on today's chord progression we've got three major chords and one minor chord. We do it in C, so it's easy to, for you to do C, F, G and D minor. So one, four, five and two. And remember you can change the values of the chords. the first one. So you're going from the D to D, F, A, C and then you've already got the C back to your C chord. And they can then form part of your melody as a repeat note. It's easier to think that way and transpose into any key. On the chart you'll see the ones we use are all highlighted. The one, four, five, two are the ones we're using today. So when we're looking at the Roman numerals, remember of course the first position is the Ionian and that's the mode that most music is written in. The Dorian is the second position and today we've got a Dorian cadence. The fourth position is the Lydian and the fifth is the Mixolydian. You can learn more about all those different modes by obtaining any of the books we've written about improvisation on our website. To change things up a little bit today, all our charts so far have been written in the key of C major, but today we're looking at the key of B flat major because there's two flats in the key signature as you can see on the score that I've, I've put up here. So if we play that in B flat and it finishes on the second chord so that would be an imperfect Dorian cadence. statement there. That's a cadence. Okay, then we'll have a nice easy ballad style in a 1-4-5-2 one, two, one, Yeah, we do ballad because it's nice and easy. You can hear the chord progression and we'll make up a simple theme. So when you're doing a theme you can base it on the notes of the chords that you're using and even the notes of the scale of each chord. And if you create something nice and simple you can then invert it take it up the octave, reverse it, change it around, just keep a nice simple theme and then it becomes easy. In the bass line, when I'm doing a ballad, I always do one, five and then the octave. It's a nice simple easy bass. 
Mm. And it always works. And then I can thump the other chord into the right hand or even just bury it up a little bit. Now let's have a look, let's see what we can come up to. So a nice simple ballad in B flat. A simple little tune that can be repeated. there on the Dorian, the second note, the C minor, gives it an interesting, not quite finishing sound, but that's the way the Dorian mode works. All imperfect cadences have that effect in some better than others. My favourite is a Phrygian, but we'll come to that. Well, we've but, done one Phrygian exercise yeah, in a previous video. That's right. And I can put the link to that one up here as well. The thing is that everyone is so used to listening to the tonic cadence that they forget that there's other ways to end a sentence. These are truly improvisation sessions. Tim doesn't get to see the charts before I get here, so what he's looking at is he's got a make-up off the top of his head. Now for a, a polyphonic player, I'm buggered if I know how they do it. <laughs> From a, from a monophonic player, to me it's just a succession of chords and I, and I think of scales. Yes, so when you're thinking of it, so you're just looking at the chords. And the scales within the chords. And then when you go to the E flat in this example, do you think of the E flat scale as well? Oh Lord, yes. This is why scales and key signatures and arpeggios are so important to monophonic players. And don't forget, there are no wrong notes. It, you'll see as we go along that the notes that Tim puts in on, I don't know where he gets them from, but um, pull them out of my crazy head. No, but th this is the fact, see, that... Yeah. So it's because the same thing is when I'm looking at a... We've just got a simple chord progression, I'm just looking at the full chords, and I've got to think of the chords, the scales, uh, what bass line I'm going to put in, how do I want to play the chord, and make sure the melody always stands out. That has to be the top note that I'm playing, so you can hear it, because you can't put the melody in below because you won't, you won't hear it, particularly if you're doing it on an organ where you've got sounds that are sustained. Is, is that a fact, Tim? Look, is the melody, has is to the, has melody to, the top note of the chord? Yeah, the melody has to be the top note of the chord or else you're not going to hear it. So we're going, if I go, you can't hear it. If I go, you can hear the melody. So you're looking at the inversion of the chord. I get you. And then putting the bass note in. And as we've said in one of the hints there, you don't have to put the full chord in. So if you decide to put in, so we're going, um, and then the next chord's an F, if we make it an F7, I don't have to play the full because the F is already in the bass as opposed to because I've already got an F oh, in the bass yeah, yeah, I, get I you. don't have to play the that'll make three F's three F's in the, in, in the arrangement not needed so I just play the A and the E flat and the F and that'll make your F7, F, your F7. yeah and because the melody is then going up to a C, well there's the last note, the fourth note. So you got F, A, C and E flat. Oh, 
that's interesting. Or you can play the C below in the middle there. And end up with an octave of the C in the right hand. Huh. But that's, you need to change around. Think about your chords. Know what notes are in them. Practice your scales all the time. And practice your chords all the time. And then you can start playing around and making some really interesting sounds. I couldn't play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got that chord progression, you can change it around, you've got your simple little tune, it's only three notes but it works and you can up, down, put the octave in instead, put your thirds in, because your thirds below the melody note always work because your chords are built on thirds. Fills it all up. It's nice. I think I'll stick to monophonic. But oh no, my days are playing around. <laughs> I'm only 75. <laughs>